Item number SCP-4789, Object Class Safe. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-4789 and DVDs are kept in a standard safe class locker. Description. SCP-4789 is a pair of promotional cardboard 3D glasses produced for the 2005 movie The Adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl. While using SCP-4789 to view a movie, subjects often describe the experience as more immersive or real and report auditory and sensory hallucinations, providing the sensations of rain, wind, heat, vibrations, and other stimuli in the movie viewed. Repeated uses of SCP-4789 result in anomalous effects occurring near subjects while they sleep. Subjects are never woken by these effects but report significantly improved moods after waking normally. These effects include sounds of indeterminate source such as loud footsteps, roars, explosions, or engine noises, reptilian and circadian bike marks appearing in nearby walls, significant changes in ambient temperature, small electrical discharges, objects within the room moving as if underwater. Addendum D-19060 was allowed to view a movie using SCP-4789 and equipped with a prototype OJOS Dream Visualizer system. 4789 Dream Log Begin Log Visuals suffer from slight interference. D-19060 appears to be in a large rocky plain at night. Volcanoes can be seen in the distance as well as a large inky black cloud taking up half the horizon and obscuring the moon. Thousands of similarly black entities of various shapes and sizes walk ahead of the cloud. A woman dressed in orange armor releases a large explosive blast from her eyes, aimed at tentacle extensions of the clouds. Beams of solid light extend from the moon, piercing the cloud. My finger is going to go through. D19060 pushes his finger into his palm. The finger appears to face through. All right, it worked. Wait. D19060 looks down on his arms again and sees that he is wearing colorful gemstone inlaid armor. Oh yeah, duh. D19060 begins to run towards the cloud. A large, approximately 200 meters, loud arm erupt from the ground and swings in a wide arc. Throwing multiple entities aside, D19060 is knocked down from the shockwave. Damn! A purple-skinned humanoid clad in indecent armor helps D19060 to his feet. As a blob of dark substance is launched at the two of them, the humanoid bisects it with an oversized glaive. The halves of the blob dissipate into smoke. Well, thanks, uh, Tibble. Tibble? Yes, more where that came from. Let's go make waves. Tibble runs off and proceeds to engage other dark entities. I need to find a commander or leader or whatever. A volcano emerges from the ground to his left and erupts, briefly blinding him. Interference intensifies for the next minute. The OJOS system becomes warmer. Uh, probably that way. As he runs, D19060 looks up and sees a flying Viking longship equipped with rocket engines, flanked by six shiny metal spacecraft flying towards the volcano. A 500 meter tall gaseous entity manifests and emerges from the cloud. The entity resembles a large three headed dragon and several gorilla like arms protruding at random locations. Static. A gigantic four-armed mechanical battle suit grapples with the dragon, while the Viking ship and its escorts provide suppressing fire. D19060 
combines an embedded motor vehicle with one oversized wheel on front and a jet engine pointed downward on the back. He busts the vehicle and drives it towards the volcano. I think it's safe to say I'm dreaming. Static. A large blue armored tyrannosaur torches up the volcano, wielding a glowing red and black blade. On its back sits a human woman with pink hair. Forward! The woman stands up and runs towards the back end of the dinosaur's spine. The dinosaur whips its tail, sending the woman flying towards the dragon's head. The woman emits a bright light. Not destruction! Not a simple flame! The woman shouts, and a flare of light erupts from the volcano, enveloping both her and the dragon. Static! D-19060 punches a worm-like dark entity in the face, and explodes in a shower of seashells. A high school marching band walks forward, destroying more entities with the shock waves emitting from their instruments. A large, wheel-shaped dark entity rolls toward D-19060 and the band scatters. Be gone! A tall man wearing gemstone-covered armor and wielding a great sword makes a crushing motion with his free hand, and a large number of green beams emanate from within the wheel entity, destroying it. D-19060 pauses. No way! King of Green's World? Eric, welcome back! I... Yeah, it's me! A green glow envelops the King of Green World for a few seconds. The other kings will be glad to see you once I regroup with him. Uh, what is this place? The King of Green World frowns. Are you quite all right, Master Eric? I would have thought you would put your mission front and back by now. I shall, uh, retrieve the ancient weaver. She will know what must be done. The King of Greenwell taps his ear. An old void shape made of glowing moving fibers appears in the air. The fibers separate, and the blue tyrannosaur previously seen emerges. Ancient Weaver, I will take my leave now. The ten gems require my backup in the magnet fields. The Ancient Weaver not. May your word remain ever sharp. The King of Green World whistles, and a green dragon-like creature with butterfly wings flies in. The King climbs atop the creature and flies away. The Ancient Weaver turns to face D-19060. Its left eye is mechanical and glows red, and appears to scan D-19060. Eric, please, Ancient Weaver, I just want to know where I am. I haven't been thought about the King of Greenworld or his brothers or sisters since I was fourteen. You dreamt him. Where did you think they went when you no longer had need of them? Something isn't right. You've been a valued warrior here for years. The kings and queens rally under your banner and flourish under the power of your memories, and yet I feel like I've seen you before. Every soul that dreams have seen me. The ancient weaver holds her sword outward and twists it, causing D-19060 to become entangled by the mass of a thread. She sheathes the sword, and the threads turn into crystal. At this point, the OJOS system freezes for several seconds before reconnecting. The machine is beginning to reach its tolerable heat limit. Hey, wait! Large comets composed of the dark cloud begin to fall to the ground in the distance, scattering large black scorpions upon impact. Lying fish resembling ocean sunfish arrive to engage the scorpions. There is no time, and the darkness in the air grows stronger. If in fact you have been compromised, I will try my hardest to save you. At least get me out of this so I can go home. Camaro and Roberto write that your people have so much to offer the world of dreams, the purity of light, the vastness of possibility, the courage and the strength to fight for what you have. Small wonder that the darkness seeks to attack you most of all. The ancient Eva reaches her arm out and faces it through D-19060's head. What the frick? I am not sure how much of 
as you well remember with this abnormality in play, if you retain anything at all, let it be that it is your duty to dream a better dream, and we in turn shall fight to make it real. The ancient weaver pulls a metallic thread from out of D19060's head, causing severe static. Ah, oh, static interpreter, we have met before, I believe. Please do not interfere again. The ancient weaver turns to her right and draws her sword in preparation. Everything that is or was begin with a dream, unless I, Plunsonor, stand resolute at the head of these worthy warriors, everything will end with a nightmare. The ground shakes, the cloud parts, and a large amorphous mass with several dozen legs crawls forward. An indistinct face emerges from its front and roars loudly. The ancient weaver spins her sword in a circle. The crystal trapping D19060 shatters into dust. It reformed more quickly than we thought. King Sapphire, Jellicom is at my position! A loud thunderclap. Dreamwalkers, it's now or never! A large number of people, all clad in various costumes or armor, materialize behind the ancient reaper. Each one is wearing an instance of SCP-4789. Dreamwalkers, summon your creations as they once helped you when you created them. Now help them, help us win this war once and for all. A man in blue armor, wielding a gigantic shard of sapphire as a sword, rides in a large animate stuffed turtle. He swings his sword upward, and several hundred duplicates of himself form from the ground. Meanwhile, a humanoid in a spacesuit lies down from the moon. Either tell me to free you, or stay and fight alongside us. It's all coming back. I will fight! The ancient weaver smiles. She draws another weapon from her back a black stone macarato, and swings it in a tight pan. Miniature solar flares fluctuate along its edges. That's with me again, Jellicram. But you are not knocking the stars we have earned. Let us expel it from this plane. Forward! Jellicram ejects eight of its legs, which right orbit rapidly. After accelerating, all eight legs break orbit and speed towards D19060 and the others. King Sapphire shouts, and a wall of solid crystal blocks the legs and shatters. King Sapphire waves his sword, and the shards of Sapphire spin and destroy her legs, reducing them to smoke. The ancient weaver vocalizes, and shimmering spider web like portals appear in a ring around Jellicrim's center. She stabs her sword into the ground, and bright beams of light emerge from each portal, striking Jellicram. A white cloud appears in the sky, and brings fall from it to hit Jellicram. Exploding on contact, D19060 reaches down to his belt. A weapon appears that hasn't presently previously, and D19060 draws it. It is an oversized gun, with a bow shaped like a shark head. Delicrum charges forward, still smoking from the beams. It partially splits itself down the middle, and bolts of electricity are released. Get down! D19060 immediately wakes, and the old JOS system overloads and bursts into flames.